Welcome to the BTM Channel's 39th short for space exploration, science, and technology. Just five days before SpaceX's historic first commercial manned spaceflight on May 30, 2020, Virgin Orbit, the satellite launching offshoot of commercial spacecraft company Virgin Galactic, conducted its Launch Demo-1 mission. The mission program called for firing the liquid-fueled Launcher-1 rocket into orbit from its Boeing 747 carrier aircraft just off the coast of Southern California. Unfortunately, the rocket's engine developed an anomaly shortly after release, and the mission was terminated. The post-launch investigation revealed the cause of the failure to be a breach in the high-pressure line carrying locks to the first-stage combustion chamber. Without a supply of oxidizer, that engine shut down and the mission was aborted. Virgin Orbit did not reveal why the specific part that failed was not discovered in earlier static fire tests. Our educated guess is that the vibration imparted to the rocket during the Demo-1 carrier flight was not effectively simulated in a ground-based fixed test fire stand. Once the investigation was completed, Launch Demo-2 could be greenlighted. The rocket Virgin Orbit will use for Launch Demo-2 shipped out of the factory in late August. After making the short trip up to Mojave Air and Spaceport, that rocket was fitted to a test stand built to emulate the 747 carrier aircraft's left wing. There, the rocket underwent a cryogenic fueling test, similar to the procedure SpaceX puts its Starship prototypes through in Boca Chica. No problems surfaced during the test. In September, the company test-fired the Newton-3 engine that will be used for the Launch Demo-2 first stage. Again, no problems surfaced during the test, and it took only two weeks to certify the engine for the upcoming launch. Both the rocket and engine were returned in October to Virgin Orbit's Long Beach headquarters for final integration. There, the Newton-4 upper stage engine was installed along with the boost stage engine in the rocket. The fully assembled rocket is undergoing final tests, while the launch team is preparing for the upcoming flight and launch that commences from the Mojave Air and Spaceport. The Demo-2 launch took an additional importance to Virgin Orbit when NASA declined the company's offer to have the flight use a test payload rather than the contract payload to give the agency more confidence in Virgin Orbit's technology. After reviewing the Demo-1 launch investigation data and the remediation plan, NASA insisted on launching the ELENA-20 SmallSat payload on the Demo-2 launch. The payload consists of 11 scientific CubeSats. Virgin Orbit has an eight-launch manifest, including the NASA launch. The others are three from the U.S. Space Force, one for GOM Space, one for Sky and Space Global, one for Cloud Constellation, and four for OneWeb. The U.S. Space Force is expected to use the first of its three rockets as a technology demonstrator. None of the seven launches after the Demo-2 launch are scheduled. OneWeb entered Chapter 11 bankruptcy in March of 2020, and its new owners may not follow through on the commitment. Sky and Space Global entered voluntary administration, the Australian equivalent of Chapter 11 bankruptcy, in April of 2020, and Virgin Orbit was forced to take a 15% stake in the firm, worth $1.4 million, to convert a $40 million four-launch agreement to a three-year $3 million cross-marketing agreement. It is not clear if any of the planned SES launches will still occur. Virgin Orbit filed an application with the U.S. government for a license to conduct the Demo-2 launch between October 2020 and February 2021. All signs seem to point to a December 2020 mission. Richard Branson, the founder of the Virgin Group and part owner of Virgin Orbit, has said the launch will occur before Christmas. Before we continue, take a moment to subscribe if you have not yet done so. The first major YouTube milestone is at 10,000 subscribers, and we are doing everything we can to get to that mark. Help us out by becoming a subscriber so we can continue to deliver great content to you. And please click the bell notification icon to ensure you are notified when new episodes are released. Virgin Orbit has received some criticism from pundits over burning $1 billion of capital since 2017 without a single orbital launch. In comparison, Rocket Lab has only spent $180 million since 2006 in development of its rockets and is actively delivering payloads to orbit. One industry observer thought that Virgin Orbit would need to conduct hundreds of launches to make its money back. A company spokesperson responded to the chatter by insisting its launch technology provided customers flexibility not found at Rocket Lab or with Northrop Grumman's Pegasus Air Launch System. Part of the answer to Branson's strategy may be classified contract subsidiary Vox Space, which was started in 2019 and was the organization that landed the Space Force contract for Virgin Orbit earlier in 2020. It appears that there are not enough classified launch dates available for the U.S. Air Force and Space Force at ground-based launch complexes, making Launcher 1 an attractive option. Branson suggested that another $200 million in funding would still be required for Virgin Orbit to get fully ready for commercial and government launches. The Wall Street Journal reported in October of 2020 
and CEO Dan Hart confirmed that the company was soliciting $200 million in funding from outside investors. The funding raise would value the company at $1 billion. Branson, despite his estimated $4.1 billion net worth, has shown little interest in putting more money into Virgin Orbit himself. His former companies that comprise a significant portion of his fortune have their own problems. The conglomerate Virgin Group had to float $480 million in special purpose shares to raise investment capital in October of 2020. And Virgin Atlantic Airways had to borrow $1.5 billion to avoid bankruptcy, a deal that included the sale of a 10% stake in Virgin Galactic, the other Branson space venture focusing on tourism. That sale downgraded Branson to minority owner status. Virgin Galactic went public via SPAC merger in 2019 at a valuation of $2.2 billion. What do you think about Virgin Orbit's prospects as an air launch provider? And the likelihood of whether it can execute at a much lower cost than Northrop Grumman and launch more often than Rocket Lab. Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this fourth briefing on Virgin Orbit's Launcher One rocket. If so, click that like button. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 140 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our Twitter account as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the BTM Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, join us on our Facebook page, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.